Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Martin and I'm one of the top shelf model analysts and today we'll be discussing debt yield. I'll be using the hotel acquisition model template in order to demonstrate how this formula works. So let's get started. The debt yield is the metric used by lenders to determine the risk of a loan and how much they'd be able to recover if the loan defaults and this number is expressed as a percentage. This is one of the key metrics lenders use in determining how much they are willing to lend to projects. So the debt yield is calculated by taking net operating income over the loan amount. So I'm on the model outputs tab in our hotel acquisition template and all of our top shelf templates have this calculation already there for us, so we're super lucky, but we're, let's look at how this calculation is working in this model. So down below in M8, M63, you'll see that the debt yield calculation for year zero is M18 over a few different cells in the annual cash flow tab. So M18 is referencing the EBITDA. So we know that the numerator for debt yield is NOI, and since we don't want to include th these association dues, these capital reserves in our NOI calculation, EBITDA is good enough to serve as our NOI. So we'll see that in year zero and year one, we have no NOI, and then it seems like we have some NOI coming in in year two, year three, year four, and year five. And that looks like when we sell. So it looks like we're probably in renovations during these years since there's no cash flows happening up here, but we have some interior renovations and exterior renovations happening. And we purchased it in year zero. So now let's look at the denominator. So we know that the debt yield former again is NOI divided by the loan amount. So if I go to the annual cash flow, H189, H206, and H220, let's see what these cells are referencing. So here we are in H189. H206 and H2220. So that is referring to the beginning balance of the acquisition debt, the beginning balance of the refi debt, and the beginning balance of the mezzanine debt. So this makes sense since we are looking at the loan amounts. So we'll see that similarly in the debt yield formula, how M18 moves to N18, it's the next year. We move to I189, I206, I220. So we're looking at the different years beginning balance and summing those together to find how much the loan amount outstanding is. So we'll take the NOI looks like there's no MES happening, so we don't need to look at MES. So it's not summing any MES, but first it'll take the NOI for year zero divided by the beginning loan balance of year zero. That, that would be 0%. Then it would take the NOI, which we didn't see any for year one, and we divide that by this 8.8. 828 and again another 0% since we have no NOI. Then we start getting some numbers flowing through since we do have NOI and we do have a loan amount. So we get up to a 9.2, an 18%, an 18.5%, and a 17.3%. So your next question might be, so what is a good debt yield? Well, most lenders would say a good debt yield would be at least a 10%, but 
but it all depends on the certain property type and how much overall risk is associated with the project. So that's all I have today for you on our discussion for debt yield. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for your time. Bye.